Welcome. The purpose of this tutorial is to introduce you to the model data required to start a new project and to provide guidance on how to use learning mode effectively. During the tutorial I'll briefly discuss component and template libraries and model data, review the create new project dialog, review the add building dialog and finally show you when to consider switching learning mode off. The component libraries tab on the opening screen lists all the component library data groups such as constructions and glazing types. The component library includes individual building elements like floors and walls and also the individual materials such as bricks and blocks which make up the building fabric. You can edit the existing library data or add or import new data in the library or export from it. Changes made to the library data in the opening screen will apply to all new models. Design Builder library data is locked to prevent accidental or inappropriate modification but you can copy and edit library data to produce your own user-defined components. Any user-defined library data is stored in a separate folder. This data is not deleted when Design Builder is uninstalled, which enables you to reload that data if you wish when you reinstall the latest version of the software. The Template Libraries tab on the opening screen lists the high-level template library groups. Again, this data can be edited or added to from either the opening screen template libraries tab or from within the model. Templates are essentially databases of information which allow you to load bulk groups of data into your model quickly. For example, the early design energy code medium weight template here contains all the construction data such as walls, floors and roof relevant to that type of building. This can be loaded into your model enabling you to set all the parameters on the construction tab with just one selection. You can easily create and add your own components and templates to the library and there's more detail on this in the help file. The component and template library data is loaded into your model when a new project is created and it then becomes model data. Only the data hard set in the model has any impact on the modeling calculations. The remaining library and template data is stored in the background available for selection. Any modification of the data whilst the model is open will only affect the current model. We can create a new project using either the file menu, the toolbar or if learning mode switched on we can use the option in the info panel here in the opening screen. These bring up the new project data dialog box which enables us to set the initial parameters for the new model. We type in the project title then select the location using either the info panel data screen here or we can use the browse button accessed by left clicking in the location section. This gives a larger screen which can be useful when there are a lot of possible selections such as here where we can see that there are a vast array of countries many of these are broken down into a number of regions. The location data contains site information such as elevation and ensures the most accurate weather data for the region is loaded to the model for design and simulation calculations. I'll select and load the Birmingham Airport location from the UK list here, which I can do either by double clicking it or by a single click to highlight and then pressing the tick icon to apply the data. You can see that this has been changed as it's now coloured red. 
The analysis type enables us to choose between the dynamic simulation calculation engine and the local or national energy compliance calculation tool where relevant. I'll leave it set to Energy Plus. The template tab allows us to load one of the specific model templates listed, but in most cases this will be left as the blank standard template for new projects. Now left click OK to create the new site. I'll use the toolbar icon to bring up the Add New Building dialog box. The Project, Assessor and Owner details can be populated if desired, but this information is generally only required where compliance reports are being generated. The Default Data tab allows us to load the templates for each of the main model data tabs if we wish. We'll do this later as we review each tab in detail. Clicking OK takes us to the Layout tab in the Edit screen where the Add Block function is automatically selected to enable us to start drawing our building. It's usually most efficient to draw the building geometry first then create and load the model data. I'm going to use this model to show you why it can be advantageous to switch off learning mode during the model data entry stage. Design Builder recognised that energy modelling is a complex business and the software has been developed to make it as intuitive and user friendly as possible. For this reason learning mode is switched on by default. Learning mode essentially provides additional user information in the info, info panel to the right of the edit screen. The information displayed relates to the particular operation being undertaken and the building level that you're operating at. Here for example at building level it provides information about editing the building layout and importing floor plans and 3D models. Selecting a block displays the tools which can be used to edit the block geometry such as cutting and moving and navigating to block level provides information about partitioning relevant to working within the block. Learning mode is an extremely useful function however there are times during the data entry stage of modeling when it can be advantageous to disable it. Switching off learning mode changes the layout by placing the model data tabs which are currently above the edit screen here to the right of the edit screen in place of the info panel. This means that you can view the model while simultaneously viewing or editing model data. Learning mode is switched off by unchecking the learning option in the interface tab of program options here and then clicking OK. The pop-up screen tells us that we must restart Design Builder for the interface changes to take effect. Having restarted the program we can see that the model data tabs have moved to the right of the edit screen and the tabs for the other screens which were below the edit screen are now above it. This interface can be extremely useful when assigning model data to particular surfaces as it allows us to navigate to the surface visually and then assign the data whilst the model geometry remains visible. It becomes even more useful as the complexity of the model geometry increases. Here for example I'll add shading to the glazing on the southern ground floor facades. I can quickly navigate to the surfaces using the model and then apply the data. Note that when navigating to surfaces in this way it's best to double click as close as possible to the geometric centre of the surface for accurate selection. Using the local shading option in the openings tab here 
I can quickly add an overhang and side fins to the glazing. Navigating back up to zone, block or building level we can immediately see that the shading has been applied. I'll also apply a rendered wall finish to the north first floor facades. A quick way of navigating direct to a surface is to double click on the glazing. I can now apply the rendered wall construction. Going back to building level and using the visualization tool, I can quickly see that the rendered wall construction has been applied on the first floor north facade. You now have all the information you need to start a new project. The next tutorial in this series will cover the key elements of the activity tab.